Hey everyone, welcome to this tutorial on Hibernate. If you've seen the previous two tutorials, you must now be knowing how to embed an object into an entity class and uh, how to persist that embedded object into the same table as the entity class. So as I told you in the earlier tutorial, this is one of the several cases in which you can have an object inside another object. Uh, in this tutorial, we're going to look at uh, we're going to go one step further. We're going to look at a slightly more uh, complicated scenario. And uh, in this case, I have... Uh, okay, in the, previous, in the previous tutorial, we had an address object, right? So this, this was the object that we had. And we had embedded this object into my user entity uh, class here. I have actually removed it because I'm going to do something else in this tutorial. But in the earlier tutorial, we had an instance of the address object in our user details class. So what we did was we marked the address object as embeddable and uh, we had marked embedded and then we had defined the address object so that the fields of this address object get embedded into the user details table that was created out of this object. So basically we are just taking this object and we are literally embedding it inside this object so that even the columns get embedded into the corresponding table. Now in this tutorial, we're going to look at, uh, we're going to take it a step further. Now what if instead of a single object or, you know, a fixed set of objects, we, we also tried uh, adding two objects in uh, the previous tutorial. We had two instances of the address. Well, that's fine. But what if I need, uh, what if I need a collection? What if I do not know how many address objects I need? And uh, I want a collection to be a member variable of this user details class. How would I handle that? Uh, the use case that I have is, I want to keep track of all the addresses that this particular user has lived in over the years. Uh, so I might have a list of uh, addresses and I don't know how many addresses are they're going to be. So I cannot instantiate them statically. Now, we can have collections and Hibernate does provide support for that. But uh, let's take a minute to think how this would work. Uh, if it's a fixed number of objects, well, it makes sense. We can have a fixed number of columns for those objects. Say, for example, uh, you know, in the previous tutorial, we had a home address and an office address. So we had separate columns for uh, the home address and separate columns for the office address in our table. And, uh, you know, once that's created, that would do. We can store the home address and the office address for each user. But now when I have when I do not know how many address objects I'll be having. I could have one, I could have zero, I could have a hundred. Now, how do I handle that? Well, obviously, how would you handle it when you were, uh, when you would design the table? You would probably create a different table for uh, the address data and uh, you would probably reference the user. Say, for example, I have user ID one and I have uh, five addresses for that user then I would insert five records into a separate table called the address table. And each of those five records would have uh, the user ID one associated with it as a foreign key so that we know that user one has these five addresses associated. So that's what we're gonna do in this tutorial. We're gonna create a collection of addresses inside the user details uh, entity class. We're gonna instantiate it and we'll see how Hibernate deals with this. So first let me create a collection. I'm gonna start with a set, okay? Um, the, you, there are a few collection objects that Hibernate supports. One of them is a set. So we'll start with that and uh, we'll see how Hibernate handles it and then we're gonna take it, uh, we're gonna look at the other details. So let me create a simple set here. I will uh, have the address set, I'll call it list of addresses because that's what it is. We have, uh, we're having a list of all the addresses that this user has, you know, has lived at or has been in. So, okay, I'm going to import this. I'll create a new set. So, when I am creating, I will have to set is actually, you know, uh, you know, it, it's a, it's not an implementation. I have to give an implementation of the set when I'm saying new. So I'm going to use, uh, I don't know, a hash set 
Actually, it should look fine for now. Again, I'm going to import hash set. I cannot use a hash set here. I have to use a set. I, I cannot use an implementation when I'm uh, declaring this, but I can define it as a hash set. We're going to look at why this is the case, but note that this is just, uh, we, we're not going to look at an implementation and we're not going to instantiate an implementation of uh, the set when we are defining this list of, I mean, we are declaring this list of addresses. Okay, so now I have this uh, list of addresses here. Let me generate the getters and setters. Okay, that's done. Save. Now all I have to do is uh, feed in those values in my Hibernate test and see what happens. So I have this first user, uh, no other details here. Um, now I just create a few addresses. Okay, I have these two address objects here. I spared you the pain of watching me type all this. So I have just initialized uh, a few values here and uh, I will be having a hash set that will store these two address objects now. So the hash set I have already defined over here. It, uh, I've defined it as a new hash set. So all I need to do is I need to get the list of addresses and I need to add these two addresses. So I will say user dot get list of addresses dot add. This takes address, so I'll pass address one. And of course, address two as well. Okay. So now we have uh, the addresses added to this list of addresses uh, set and we are ready to save this. Now save is already happening. I have this uh, session factory session, everything code is as it was before. I'm saving this user object. Now there is this annotation that I need to make for uh, Hibernate to know that this is actually to be treated as a list and I want this list to be saved. And uh, the annotation that needs to be used is at element collection. And of course, I'll have to import this from Java extra persistence again. Now add element collection is all I have to do to uh, mark this this entire uh, collection object to be persisted by Hibernate. So I'll just save this. And anyway, this is marked as an embeddable. So it knows that this is this is the address that's over here. And I've marked it as an element collection so that Hibernate knows that it has to be treated as a collection and uh, it should not actually be embedded as a table, but as a separate table, which has a list of all these addresses. So let's let's just, Run this and see what happens. Okay, now look at the insert statements. First, it's inserted the user data into the user details table. Now, the user details is what we have configured for this. This entity class over here, it's inserted it fine. And it has inserted only the values username and user ID note here. It has not done anything about the, the collection here. Okay, so that was the first insert. This next two inserts are into a table called user details underscore list of addresses. So what is this table name? It's, uh, it's the name of this entity underscore name of this collection uh, in member variable. So it has auto generated this name in order to save all the members of this collection. And now inside this, it has generated a primary key, which is the user, I'm sorry, it's a foreign key, which is the user details underscore user ID. And this is actually a reference to this, you know, primary key of the user uh, table, which is this one. 
and then it has inserted all the other values. Uh, let's have a look at the database table so that it's clearer. Okay, now user details, straightforward, just this. It does not worry about the address. It's a collection and uh, the collection has to be taken care of elsewhere. So this is the actual table. Now let's see what this has. Hmm, this is odd. Uh, okay, I've made a mistake here. Um, this should be address two. It's a copy paste error. Save and let's run this again. There you go. So both the records are inserted into this user details underscore list of addresses table. So to summarize, I have a user details uh, entity class and that entity class has uh, a collection. The collection happens to be a set here and uh, I have annotated that as element collection. And I have also defined the collection class here, the actual class, which is a you know, uh, member of that collection, which is the address. Now, the idea is that I can have multiple addresses, a collection of addresses for every user entity. Now, how does Hibernate deal with it? Hibernate uh, takes this, uh, the first, uh, the actual entity object, and it creates a record for that entity object in the entity table. And then it looks at how many addresses are there for this user class. So whatever is the size of the, uh, whatever is the size of this collection, say I have uh, n number of uh, objects in this collection. So what it does is first of all, it creates a sub table for this collection so that it can store all those, uh, all those elements. And then depending on how many of our members are there in this collection, what it does is, it creates so many records and then since it's first saved the uh, the user object it knows what's the user id now it adds that user id for all the sub elements that it saves so if my user object has five addresses there will be five records here for each of those addresses i mean five records for the five addresses and then the user id for each of them will be the user id that was saved when you know it saved the user details, which is this ID. So it saves this ID for all of those uh, all of those addresses. So that's how that's how Hibernate makes the link between all the addresses and the main entity. So this is uh, this is one of the ways in which Hibernate can save collections. So we're going to look at some of the implications of this collection in the next tutorial.